Well, hello everyone. My name is John Lustria. I'm the Education Coordinator at the National Museum of Civil War Medicine, and I'm thrilled to be joined today by Dr. Evan Kutzler. Welcome, Evan. Thank, well, thank you. Uh, the, Evan uh, being the esteemed author of uh, the new book, Living by Inches, uh, the Sensory Experience of Civil War Prisons. And uh, we're gonna talk with him today about, uh, about his book. Uh, but before we get into that, just want to say thank you, first of all, for tuning in to all of these videos. Uh, you know, amidst this time of crisis, it, it has been uh, a blessing to kind of see the people regularly tuning in and to connect with um, uh, our membership, both old members and newer members. Um, so that, that aspect of it has been really wonderful. Um, and so thank you for watching. Um, if you enjoy uh, videos like this or have enjoyed other videos we've posted, uh, please like the video, please share the video, tell your friends about it that uh, you think might enjoy it, or even tell your friends that might not enjoy it and have them watch it anyway. <laughs> um, that helps us a lot, gets more eyes on, uh, on stuff like this. And uh, with our doors closed, uh, we're not bringing in admissions, of course. So if you'd consider either donating or, or becoming a member, uh, that helps us bring more and more video content like this to you. So if you've enjoyed these, um, consider becoming a member if uh, you haven't yet, or if you are a member, maybe consider donating uh, a separate donation. Uh, and we've been overwhelmed by your generosity so far. So thank you so much uh, for all of that. Uh, oh, and, and be sure to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest um, uh, programming in, uh, in Civil War Medicine. So with all that said, uh, we'll go ahead and get started here. So um, Evan, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself and the, the origins of this project, how you got started with it all. Sure. Uh a decade ago, I, I didn't set out to write a book about Civil War prisons or the five senses. Uh, I've, I've been fascinated with the Civil War for uh, most of my life, uh, but I was a latecomer to the Civil War prison experience uh, and, uh, and, and sensory history. Uh, I, was, um, I, I was looking for a topic that had been uh, done maybe less thoroughly than, than others, uh, and I was looking for a new method and eventually you know prisons as a topic and, and sensory history as a uh, as a method uh, were, were, were married in the uh, in the early stages of this research project but it was it, it was a my, my very first experience in looking at some prison records uh, convinced me that there was uh, a, a, a story an undertold story that, that, that could be developed more more thoroughly I visited Andersonville uh, for the first time in 2011, and they, th there's a small library. It has copies of, of, of a number, a couple dozen diaries, so not the originals, but transcripts, you know, important enough. And I went down. I wanted to see the site. I went down there. I visited it, uh, and I had also I had these big plans. I, I thought I was gonna because I was living in Tennessee for the summer. Uh, I was it was the year before I was studying for a comprehensive exam, so I had all, all these ideas about what I was going to to do. I wanted to. Uh, I, I wanted to spend a night in, in Atlanta on the way down, and then I was going to have one day of research at Andersonville, and then spend another night in, uh, in Atlanta with friends, and you know, just celebrating the summer. Um, and what I came across in the library at Andersonville uh, affected me so greatly, right? The, 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 the handwritten accounts of, you know, the, the experiences, uh, the, the timelessness, the just the, the overall trauma, the slow-moving tragedy of, of Andersonville um, affected me so greatly that I needed every minute of that seven-hour drive back to Tennessee. I didn't even stop in Atlanta. I said, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll text, I'll call my friends later and tell them I, I'm not going to make it back. But um, it was just processing, you know, those, uh, those writings for the first time. And um, it was probably at that point that I knew that there was there was the prisons required more attention by historians, and so eventually I I came to decide that it, the sensory angle uh, was going to be the one that I was going uh, to use, and uh, that was the that's the origins of of living by inches. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's funny you say how the the project in some ways kind of snuck up on you. I, I I found that a number of things have kind of done that with me, where I didn't I never set out to. Well, I certainly never set out to 
to kind of study Civil War medicine, but here I am, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that I'm here. So it's, it's kind of funny how that, that tends to happen. Sure. Uh, you, you mentioned something about kind of the, the, the slow trauma uh, of living in a, in, in a Civil War prison. Um, does that have anything to do with the title, Living by Inches? Uh, and I'm just curious about the, the origin of the title as well. Yeah, that's a great question. So the, the phrase that was common in Civil War prisons uh, was dying by inches. Mm. Uh, and, and, it refer and it was, a, it was an old phrase, right? But it was, it was, it was slang for, um, for suffering on a scale uh, longer than say a, a, a battlefield death, right? It was, it was a play, it was, it was used to describe hospitals. Uh, or, uh, or 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 prisons in in the 18th century, and it kind of had, had had you know state had had its relevance up through the mid 19th century as well, and um, and I I found the I, the phrase the metaphor really interesting, and that's one of the things I I was looking for in these records was how are you know, in addition to just you know tell me about you know what the sources to tell me about smell and sound and taste and so forth, I, I wanted to know how how is language being used, what are the what are the recurring metaphors? And, and dying by inches stuck out as uh, a, a useful metaphor. Is that kind of the same strata as as the sensory language? And uh, but I was never entirely satisfied with it. I I, I didn't I didn't want I, I, my title was never going to be dying by inches. Um, I, I didn't like I don't like personally I, I don't like titles with with death in it or yeah it's, uh, it's or pretty about, bleak for sure <laughs> right or or if it's about andersonville or a prison i don't want hell in the title um you know i just but but it occurred to me that you know the, when most of the prisoners who are writing about dying by inches in fact survive right and and even those who don't who who you know who may use the phrase or to whom the phrase might apply people who are suffering from you know Chronic diarrhea, or dysentery, or or uh, 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 any any other other kind of wasting diseases, uh, they were they're living by inches, right? Before before they die, right? So the it occurred to me that you know, and, and one did not need to to die to experience living by inches, um, and so I thought that that was a, a useful way to encapsulate that I'm looking at the details, that I'm looking at this slow burn of of, of, of of trauma um and that's you know and that the you know the, that that stuff should matter in in historical analysis and trying to come up with the with kind of the big kind of what does it all mean um, mm -hmm. answer to to our, our research yeah yeah and i think that's something that uh i would imagine that healthcare workers are kind of experiencing now living by inches that kind of slow grind of of just kind of grappling with this the, the intensity of of experience so um you know that, that that's anyway that's what it calls to mind sure. um so we've had uh now a couple sensory historians on uh on these uh, interviews we we had dr melanie keekley on uh, a few weeks ago and and you know we've uh asked this question to to a few folks so i'm just curious um what, what's your take on, you know, why do you think sensory history is important? What does it unlock? Um, and, and, you know, how you got into that? Well, and excuse me if I'm a little prickly with, with the questions about, uh, about the field. You know, in part, you know, I understand that the, the, there's this sense of, well, it's, it's, it's a new field. Uh, and so we have to kind of explain how it fits. But, you know, I, I guess from my perspective, it doesn't feel all that new. Right, you know the the Journal of the American History uh, had a had a roundtable on this in, in 2008. The American Historical Review had one in 2012. Um, I mean, the, the you know the the what makes sensory history important is what makes history important, right? Is that it contextualizes the past, uh, and so you know in in you know in the case of you know the smell detectives, right? As 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 you you allude to, right? It's it's about the it's the context of you know, of, of, of the specter of, of, of odor as being, you know, the embodiment of disease in the 19th century and how important that is to kind of understanding the experience of public health uh, in that era. Uh, and that's something that applies, you know, immediately to, to, to prisons as well. So it's, you know, it's, it's about, you know, sensory history can be about tracing, you know, how does, how, how, how does human, how do the human senses change culturally across place? 
or a, a change within one society across time, uh, or it can be about you know, articulating the, the texture of a moment in the past, right? The experience of you know, a, a, a battle, right? Or of a prison camp or of a hospital. Uh, and so it's, you know, it, it, it helps us to interpret those moments and those places uh, where, you know, that, that, you know, that they like kind of haunt us um, in, in the present. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, exactly. And, and I think you're, you're so right to say that while in some ways sensory history is new, it's really the oldest thing out there. Uh, and it's this paradox of it kind of being right in front of us this whole time. And we just haven't, you know, sat down to really kind of grapple with it in, in a serious way. And so um, I, I think that's very well put. The, the only, uh, oh, and, 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 and that's, you know, and I'm, I'm getting more and more aggressive with, with, with when I get that, that question. The only time I've ever been uh, offended by it was, was or, or it was the, uh, it, was, it wasn't a question to me, but in 2016, the, the uh, Museum of American History, mm -hmm. as an April Fool's joke. Oh, no. Yeah, you know where I'm going with this. Said that they're announcing the Smells of the Past project, and they had a, a picture of a of a of a Civil War brogan uh, <laughs> up there, and and they were and they were posting these these real questions. They were pretending were fake about how 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 the how the, the past is textured by these smells and smell changes over time. Oh no! And and I just I wanted to scream at them. You know this is a real thing, right? Uh, so. That's 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 the that's the back, that's where I'm coming from uh, in in this answer. No, it's 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 very fair and and it's um, similar yet different. You know the the you know whenever uh, you know Civil War historians have to you know come across someone that you know says well the war wasn't really about slavery. It's like oh, but it was though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, maybe uh, give us sort of an overview of. If, to the extent that it's possible to give an overview, but um, you know, g give us a sense of of the experience of, of being in Civil War prisons, and then maybe highlight some some things that uh, your your research kind of unlocked that um, you thought you know added some color or texture to to that. Sure, I think that the experience of Civil War prisons, on one level, is one of inversion, and it's a sensory inversion. Right. What you know, there, there, there's there's darkness where there should be light. Um, there's uh, 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 sounds. There's noise where there should when when and where there should be silence. There's silence, for instance, on Sundays or on ho on national holidays when there should be the sounds of celebration. Uh, there are you know the, the 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 air that is supposed to keep us living you know is is polluted. Uh, with these agents of of disease that you know, that prisoners experience as as odor, uh, the food that's supposed to nourish the body uh, is instead uh, 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 perceived to be kind of wearing down the body inch by inch, uh, and these you know these these wasting diseases, and and so the you know the, the and and this is and this is where you know sensory history is kind of you know, first and foremost into and helping us narrate, helping me narrate how a, a, a person in Andersonville or in John, at Johnson's Island or Elmira or Libby Prison, anywhere, any of these many prisons around, there's 150 of them um, or, or more, uh, if we think about kind of impermanent places of captivity, how someone is narrating their own experience. Um, you know, it's, it's the, the language of losing something uh, comes out again and again and again uh, when when prisoners or you know, union prisoners uh, are, are being loaded off the, the boats uh, at City Point, Virginia. Um, Walt Whitman uh, remarks, uh, not that they look like they're in bad health, not that they look like they're, uh, about, or not just that they're in bad health, not just that he doesn't expect that they're going to survive, but he actually questions their humanity. And he says, you know, are these you know, are these, are these men, are, are, are they not something else? He's, and, and, and the language he uses describes them as, as being kind of, you know, the, the visual embodiment of what we kind of think of as a, as a zombie. It's not quite living, not, it's not, it's not dead. 
Um, it's somewhere in between. And, you know, and so the, you know, trying to capture that experience um, is, you know, the, the senses are, are, are first and, and uh, front and center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, that's fascinating, that, uh, that descriptor there. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to bring this question back around, but there's a, a, a fantastic database out there uh, called the Private Voices Database. It's a, a collection of letters um, written or dictated by illiterate or semi-literate soldiers. I encourage everyone to check it out. It's, it's a very, very cool site, a uh, great resource, um, even just to kind of poke around on. Um, but one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting in, in that project is they kind of look at kind of differences of language regionally or, you know, or by state and all that sort of thing. And a common question that, you know, to the when the subject of Civil War prisons comes up at the museum, um, people, you know, Andersonville, of course, gets a lot of press, but, you know, people will say, well, you know, they were all pretty bad, right? Um, and I think that's unquestionably true. But um, did you notice any kind of differences or, or were there any in the way that um, soldiers talked about being in northern or southern prisons, just even from the perspective of language. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the things about pain is that it's very difficult to for for, for me to describe my sense of pain and for someone else to believe it. Um, right? It's inherently subjective. It's um, it's it's basically not communicable, right? We can only talk about it in, in metaphor, which means that, you know, when we, we talk about suffering, um, you know, physical pain or, or any, any, any form of, of trauma, it can be very difficult to take that you know, seriously as, as an outsider to that experience. Um, and I say that to say that, you know, I think that, you know, on, on, I, I don't want in my writing to simply say, suffering or experience is something that, you know, that could be measured by inches, right? Or that could be measured, you know, in a, on a, on a measuring stick or on a scale, um, because, you know, that's not true to the human experience. Um, you know, that said, um, you know, there, there are all sorts of ways to kind of come up with metrics for, you can look at the death rate, you can look at this sort of thing. And, um, you know, I, I, I tend, I, I try, it's, it's impossible to avoid comparison, right? You, I mean, if, and, and because I, I organized this book by sense and not by place or not mm -hmm. chronologically, I, I put Andersonville and Johnson's Island or Elmira and, and Libby Prison all together to make the point that the, the, the prisoners, in terms of thinking about their experiences, are doing the same sorts of, of mental processes in, in coming up with this. I'm not saying that they're the same experiences, right? I'm saying that they're using the senses in, in similar ways to, um, to, tell, to tell their, their, their stories. Um, now I, you know, uh, and, 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 that's, and I'm sure it's, it's interesting you mentioned you get this question a lot uh, because when I worked at Andersonville, you know, of course I, I did too. Uh, I, was, I was a seasonal park ranger there um, after getting my PhD and before getting a, a teaching job. Um, and, you know, you, you, you think back at those, oh, I wish I had answered the question this way. Um, I, I have a, a stock answer that now that, that I didn't have then. Um, but, you know, the, if, if, if in this, and this, and this shows, this shows kind of where I, where I sit on this, but, um, you know, if I would, I would, I would think the real answer to the question you can find in asking yourself, if I had to send my son uh, to Civil War prison camp, uh, would I send them to a, uh, a, a Northern Civil War prison camp or would I send them to a Southern Civil War prison camp? Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, and the, uh, and, and it may, may depend on the season, uh, but the, you know, the, but I, I think that says a lot about the, you know, the survivability. I mean, the survivability of Southern prisons, there, there's no doubt that, that they were, it was uh, much more difficult to survive a Southern prison than a Northern one. Um, and there, there are, there, there are there are numerical ways to, to demonstrate that. There's also plenty of, um, of uh, some more subjective ways or, or qualitative ways. Um, and, you know, it is, it was more difficult to find the sense, it was slightly more difficult to find the sensory experiences of Confederates in Northern prisons, right? They, the intensity uh, seemed to be 
uh, different in uh, northern and southern prisons. That's not to say, though, that right that, that the experience of listening was any less traumatic in a northern prison than a southern prison. It's just it, it leaves a, a slightly different imprint in the historical record. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a great point to make about how, as a historian, when you're kind of going through these sources, you know, you need to acknowledge that, you know, you know, we didn't have the, that exact experience. And so the, the words can only communicate so much, but, you know, also trying to, you know, the, the, the difficulty of accessing the interior world, you know, of someone that lived 150 years ago, you know, in some ways it's, it's, part of what we need to do to kind of make an effort, but also knowing going into it that we just can't at the same time, um, you know, it's sort of, uh, uh, you know, almost uh, fatalistic <laughs> in, in some ways, but, um, but I think that's a great point to make, especially when it comes to, to kind of how they, how they describe these kind of, these awful experiences. Um, and I, and I also love that kind of stock answer. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's bad across the board. You wouldn't want to send anyone you loved um, to any of these places. Well, and it, and it's it's but it, it's, I'm fascinated by the you know the the, the question right or, or or the or the the ex, the expected response because that was the same thing at at uh, you know at Andersonville you know uh, the the answer that, that people want is that that they're all, that they're all the same that they're they're all they're all bad over they're all over and and you know that's that's even you find. Pick up a book on a northern prison, and you know, six times out of ten, seven times out of ten, uh, an introduction will say something about, "Well, we know all there is to know about Andersonville." So now we're going to look at Camp Chase. Now we're going to look at Johnson's Island. Now we're going to look at, um, and that's it's been such a successful rhetorical strategy that there are now more books on northern prisons than there are on southern prisons, <laughs> substantially more. Uh, you know, Andersonville is kind of an outlier. But there, you know, but there's not, you know, there really aren't, you know, modern scholarly books on in, in individual case studies, and partly because it's very difficult to do a case study of 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 a, of a Confederate prison because they're coming in, they're coming out, they're they're, you know, Andersonville is only there for 14 months, uh, most of them, and that's long for a for a Confederate prison. Um, but the you know, it, it it there's we're in this weird space now where the the, the effect of the memory of Civil War prisons has reshaped, you know, the, the, even the scholarship. And now, I mean, in terms of, there hasn't been a book, a monograph on Andersonville, um, well, in 15 years or so. And then I'd wow. say a, a, real, a good one in, in a quarter century. Um, so, you know, and, and my, my book is not about Andersonville, right? It's, it's about all of them. So there's still... Uh, you know, there's there's so much work to be done in 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 that field. That that's that's kind of shocking to me. I I I didn't realize it had been that long since there'd been a, a, I guess a, a landmark study or something like that on on Andersonville. That's uh, that's that's incredible. Um, and, and you know, just as we talk about this this question, the the more intelligent I think it is, the way that. Um, not that I thought it was unintelligent of you, <laughs> but the, the more intelligent, you know, the more clever it is that I think that, you know, you organize your book by sense, because in some ways you're, you're saying that this question of, you know, kind of comparing, um, it's almost like missing the point um, in some ways of kind of getting at this, this experience. And not to say that maybe it's not worth asking entirely, but, but it's, it's, not, it's not kind of near the top of the list of, of key questions. Um, so I think that that was a, a clever move by, by doing that. Um, you know, in, in any research project, you'll, you, you come across things that you don't expect to find. Uh, as you were kind of doing research for this, what were some of the most surprising things that you came across? Well, it, it, the, the decentralization of the prison archive, or what I call the prison archive, and by that I just mean all the places that that you know records about Civil War prisons have ended up. So it's not like you know the, the prison archive, you know, Pennsylvania Avenue, Washington D.C., but it's just it's it's everywhere, um, and and that that was surprising in in that it, it shaped how I organized it too, right? You know, I I'd like to say that. I organized it precisely to, to make that point, right? But, but it was also expedient uh, because 
the archive was decentralized. You I, I found records about prisons in dozens of different archives. Uh, you know, and, and and you know, and so organizing them by place or by time period would have been a Herculean effort. Uh, and so instead, you know, it, it, that was the, there was there, there was a way of kind of dealing with that problem of the, you know, prisons are some of those cosmopolitan places in the country uh, because they're bringing in people from all over the the, uh, the, the United States, including the the the, 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 the rebellious uh, part of the United States. And so the you know the, the, the of course those records end up you know all four corners uh, too. And so the uh, you know so that was that was a, a, a solution to uh, kind of a meth a, a, a source problem. Uh, that, I, that I faced early on. Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's hard for me to, to think of specific subject matter surprises. You know, I think I was, you know, I, I was surprised at how easy some of the, the senses were to excavate you know, on the surface, but then it would take longer to, to kind of you know, tell me, okay, what does, this, what does this mean? Whereas others that I might expect you know, there to be a lot of evidence on based upon, you know, our perceptions of, of those spaces. You know, there was less, not, not none, but, you know, I was able, uh, but, but less than, you know, I had, had to go, I had to search longer uh, for those in the, in the strata of uh, sensory descriptions of, of prisons. Mm -hmm. And by that same token, um, was there a, a chapter that was kind of particularly challenging to write or one that you really had to kind of cut stuff away to get it to kind of fit within the kind of regular length you were looking for? Sure. So the, the chapter on smell, right? I would expect you know, smell to be the first thing that, that any prisoner was, was writing about. Um, and, and it's there, but it's often in kind of second and kind of third order language, right? You'll have, you know, some, some prisoners are saying, you know, this, this odor is destroying my sense of smell. It's going to make me sick. It's going to kill me. Uh, right. And, 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 but that's a, that's a distinct minority of, of prisoners who write about smell, who, who say that uh, others, you know, they, they'll, 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 they go to those metaphors, right. Uh, hog pen, um, animalistic metaphors are, are all through, uh, civil war writings, especially prison writings. And so it's kind of a way of, all right, eventually you kind of feel, okay, they're, they're talking about, you know, if, if, if I use the metaphor of a hog pen uh, to describe, you know, a room in my house, um, you know, that's a, that's a dead metaphor, right? I don't, I don't, I can imagine what a hog pen smells like, but I, I know I've, I've never worked on a farm. I've never lived on a farm. Mm -hmm. um, but someone in, Johnson's Islands, or someone at Belle Isle, or someone at Andersonville, they likely had come into contact with the hog pens. That's a living metaphor, mm -hmm. um, and so you know, kind of finding out those ways, you know, the, the, to to write about um, the senses when there's less description than than one might like. On the other hand, uh, in terms of food, uh, you, you, there, there's there's an overabundance of information about food. Now there's much less about the taste of food. Um, but you know that was one of the things I found striking and had to kind of restrain myself in, in writing um, is that you know one of the last things that prisoners wrote about, right? So they might start off with, you know, these little pocket diaries, you know, the size of a moleskin journal today, you know, and they have six days in uh, uh, on or three days a page. And they might start out filling every line of that, as small as it is. Um, after a few months, they might just be recording if they ate meat that day, um, or or what they ate. And 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 there are times where the the, the the diaries become nothing but food journals. And I think that you know is 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 significant. It tells us something about the experience of hunger. Um, you know the the, the you know, pe uh, people who are you know, on, on restricted food intake, we'll talk more about food than than just about anyone else. I, 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 I'm saying that I'm saying that as a as a ahistorical kind of timeless thing. I, I and I'm, I'm, I'm I can get in trouble doing that. But um, but you know, look at you know 
look at places of, of famine or places of, of, of siege or prisons, and you know you can you can you can read the hunger in those diaries even when they're not specifically talking about hunger. And so it was it was, it was so instead of just writing about you know here's a here's a prison cookbook um, uh, of I, I thought well let me let me follow how does hunger change the way in which prisoners are writing about the experience of food, the enjoyment of food, uh, the, the, you know, the, um, the and, and, and all the associated behaviors um, that, that are around it. So I had to, I had to reorganize that chapter to uh, cut it in about half from what, uh, what it was looking like uh, before the revisions. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I also probably wouldn't have guessed that that was um, as, as prevalent, but yeah, I mean, it makes total sense you know, when you, when you put it like that. Um, what is your, your hope for living by inches kind of as it kind of goes on to, you know, what will have its own life and, and endure, you know, beyond you, what do you hope uh, either people take away for it or what it might inspire uh, other people in the field to write or think about what, what are your hopes for, uh, for this book? I would, I would love for, Civil War scholarship, especially the, the scholarship dealing with the soldiering experience, to put captivity you know, into its rightful place within those experiences. Um, you know, I, I think um, you know, I, was, I was looking through the the index for the uh, the Cambridge history of of the Civil War um, and. I was deeply saddened that there's only one chapter on prisons and it's about policy. That seems to miss the point to me. And, you know, there, there was, and it's, it's not that, that civil war soldiering scholarship has never dealt with this. Um, it has, um, but it's, it's, it's frequently, you know, a kind of the you know, obliga obligatory, you know, prison chapter. Right. And, you know, that relies on some of the, you know, the some post-war records, um, and, and the archive is rich, right? You know, they're, 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 they're this is, I, I, I don't believe that, I, I know that I have not written the only interpretation of captivity, uh, even through the census, right? There's, there, there's, uh, it, this is a lightly environmental approach. Um, I think there is, you know, there could be you know, much more done on the uh, on the environmental history of of, of, of captivity of, of prisons. You know, the the, the human non human interactions that I talk about in the lice chapter is you know, is, is kind of the tip of, of that iceberg. Um, you know, I, I would love to see more scholarship uh, on on prisons, and and luckily, I mean that that is that is occurring, and it's not because of you know my book, but it's it's my book is part of this. Uh, re kind of awakening to these experiences, but it's it's time to you know to to to, to open that door once again. Right? It's it's uh, it, it was closed, I think, in the early 20th century uh, because it was too divisive and painful. Right? This is David Blight, you know, writes about that this you know prisons are the only experience where the race and reconciliation thing doesn't work. Uh, you know, he, he, he say, says that plainly, uh, and and so by the 1930s, we have uh, these, these policy type studies that um, they're sterile, you know, right? It's, it's not about the human experience. And unfortunately, and that, that has animated the, which prison policy was worse or which pr prison policy was better. And that we gotta, we, if, if, we wanna, if we wanna understand, you know, that as, if we wanna understand the civil war in its totality, we have to do, deal with the edges better. And, mm -hmm. you know, one, it, more, you know, more than one in ten, uh, you know, soldiers find themselves in prison at some point in the Civil War, and so this is, um, it's not a, and and for those who did, right, it's not a, it's the captivity experience is not a sideshow. It, it is the show. Uh, mm -hmm. It's what they write about if they write a memoir, um, and we should, uh, we should take that as a cue that uh, that these these stories these, these stories matter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as uh, as I've heard it said, you know, if you're 
you're a Civil War soldier and you're wounded in a minor skirmish that no one's ever heard of, it may as well be the Battle of Gettysburg for that soldier. Um, and, and the same applies, you know, for Civil War prisons. If you have to go through something that, that traumatic, that is, you know, that, that's the, the defining event, perhaps, of, of the Civil War for that soldier. And, and I think you're, well, you're, you're absolutely right. It's, it hasn't been um, a defining point of Civil War literature to the extent that it ought to be. Um, so I, I certainly hope that that wave that, that you're a part of um, does indeed continue to keep, uh, keep on going. And so on, on that note, um, as we kind of come to a close here, um, you know, with people spending a lot of time inside um, who, you know, might want to read more about this, of course, definitely read Living by Inches. Um, but do you have any other recommendations of books that um, you've read that you also enjoyed on the subject of uh, uh, Civil War prisons? Any that come to mind? Hmm. Um, Not to put you on the spot here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who are your friends? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, so I, uh, uh, there, there was a book out last year on, uh, on surrender in the Civil War, uh, mm. Raising the White Flag. Um, that uh, with David Selkinet that uh, I, I thought uh, I, I hope I got his name right. I've only read it. I've never heard it, um, and so I, I'm trying to what does it look like. Uh, but the uh, you know that was a really interesting take on you know this this space between soldiering and captivity, um, and at, at one level. On the other hand, it's, it's it's also kind of a narrative history of. of Surrender throughout the Civil War that I uh, I found fascinating. Uh, well, I also really like uh, uh, Lorian Foote's uh, um, uh, The Yankee Plague uh, about a prison escapes in in the final uh, final months of the Civil War, mostly in South Carolina, um, and that's um, that, that's a that, that was. It was I was I was happy to see that in part because I, I cut a chapter from my book about prison escapes. And it was the one that it was a multi-sensory chapter and it just didn't seem to fit in. It was, it was, it was, it was only about union prisoners in the South um, and seeing, you know, the treatment, the really good treatment of, of that subject in that book uh, made me, you know, will, uh, made cutting that chapter easier. Uh, mm -hmm. So I, I, I certainly recommend that. And I will say that, um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, when this will air, but the, um, the, the, the UNC press, has made uh, all its Civil War America series, at least maybe more, uh, maybe, maybe all of them, uh, all, all of its books available for free uh, for the time being on, on Project Muse. So, um, you know, buy the book if you want, uh, you know, but it's also, you can, you can, you can look at samples or, or download entire chapters uh, on, on Project Muse uh, of Living by Inches or you know, the Yankee Plague or Raising the White Flag. Very cool, I actually didn't know that. that I'll have to to take a look at that. And um, we had uh, David Silknut uh, speak at the museum last year. So our, our audience, um, at least those of you that were there, um, should be at least uh, a little bit familiar with that. Um, so uh, definitely check those out. Um, thank you so much for, for coming on uh, today, Evan. Really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, if you like these videos, uh, please consider liking them, sharing them, uh, liking our Facebook page, subscribing to our YouTube channel, uh, and consider becoming a member so we can continue bringing uh, great content like this uh, to you. Uh, so on that note, um, we'll see you next time, whatever that is, uh, Evan. Thanks. All right. Bye, everybody.